What's up guys and welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video we're covering the assembly tool. And you'll find it in the modify tab, assembly right there. So what is an assembly and why wouldn't you use it? An assembly is kind of like a model group. It's going to act somewhat like a model group in that it's going to take a bunch of elements and put them together as an assembly, if that makes sense, right? And once you have an assembly, you can do a lot of different things. You can create views from a specific assembly automatically. Revit will do this for you. So there's a, a few different ways, a uh, few different reasons you might use an assembly. And it, maybe it's uh, some sort of specific configuration with uh, the type of model elements you have, whether it's something specific or it's just something that you need to document on its own maybe it's like an elevator cab interior or something like that something specific where it's kind of its own specific unit within the model i'm going to jump right into this basic floor plan that i have and we're going to create an assembly from this from it's just a portion of it what i'll do is i i just want to use these two bathrooms here as an example i'm going to create an assembly from this so all I need to do at this point is select everything I want to be in the assembly. Once I've done that, I can very easily go into the modify tab and then create assembly. And as soon as I do that, I am prompted to name the assembly, which is really nice to actually have to name something, but also naming category. And you'll see the different naming categories I have are actually categories from the different types of elements I've selected. Because I've selected a door, I have the option to just file this as a door category assembly. Same thing with casework and generic model, plumbing, fixtures, and walls. You could really go back and change this if you want, but just for the sake of this tutorial, let's put this in walls. So let's call this just bathroom assembly. Bathroom assembly right there. So I'm going to name this. I'm going to hit OK, and nothing's going to happen which that's perfectly fine. But whenever I hover over this bathroom, I now have this full selection like before, but it's as an assembly. And if you scroll all the way down in your project browser, the very bottom, you'll see at the very bottom you have assemblies. And if I expand this, I now have bathroom assembly. And that's exactly what we just made. You can click on it right here and see it's under the walls assembly because we place it under the walls category right, right there. And I can change this if I want. I can also rename it here. You can give it, you can put this on a specific work set. In this case, I would, might just put it on work set one just so everything's clear. You can give it a specific mark, which means you can schedule these items, anything like that. You can even have it set up to where it's in a specific phase, whether it's new or existing, whatever. But that's not even the greatest part about assemblies. So, like I said, they do act like model groups in that I can take this assembly and I can just copy it again. I can take this entire assembly and just copy it somewhere else. And now I have two completely separate instances of that assembly, which is perfect because you may have the same thing repeating over and over and you just need to document it once. In that case, this is what assemblies are for. So what I can do now, I will select this assembly. And the, now again, the best part about it, the assemblies is that Revit will create views for you, which is perfect. This is, this is actually why you use assemblies. So I've got this assembly here and I need to document it. I need to make a plan, a section, you know, all these types of things for the documents. So let's go up here and I see I have edit assembly. If I click edit assembly, just like model groups, I have the add and remove. So I can come in here, I can add a random wall here and a random wall there. I can add those to the assembly. I can also remove them. I don't necessarily want them in the assembly, that's fine. I can finish and I'm back to where I have, I've got the assembly. I can always disassemble, which in a sense is kind of like ungrouping. It's going to make every element its own element again. It's going to take away the assembly. I'm no longer going to see the assembly down here at the bottom, and they're all their own elements. So I'm going to undo that so we get the assembly back. I've got the assembly selected, and up here also I see create views. Again, here's the best part. Create assembly of views. What do I want to do? Well, I want to create views that are a specific scale. and Generally, if you're making an assembly, you're probably doing uh, a more detailed view at this selection or whatever you're looking at in the assembly. In this case, half an inch equals a foot is fine. I'll, I'll just leave that. And now the best part is I can select from all these different types of views that Revit will create for me based on my assembly. 
I don't want all of these selected, that's a little bit of overboard, but maybe I want a 3D ortho view, a plan view, a couple sections, and I'll do just an elevation of the left side. I could even do a wall schedule and a door schedule. I want. I can go, you could go as crazy as you want with all these different types. But also the great thing too is I've got these view types, of course, but then I have view templates. If you have view templates set up already in your projects and you have a template with a bunch of view templates in there already, you probably, you probably do, it's great to use these because you can assign them to these types of views in the very beginning before you create the assembly views. At this point, I've selected the 3D ortho view and I've got this 3D presentation template with this plan. I've got sort of the different plan views I have and just yeah, plan construction, that's a basic one. Same with section, I've got a couple of section, wall sections here, use that one. Elevation, same thing, I've got an enlarged elevation and then a wall schedule, I don't need to get too fancy with this. And same with the door schedule, that's fine. And when you check assign, that's going to assign that view template to that view type that the view that the assembly will create for you. And finally, at the very bottom, you can see sheet. And at this point, you could even have it to where Revit will place these on a sheet for you. It's that crazy and that nice. So I've got all these different kinds of sheets, but I'm just gonna leave it a default for now. I'm gonna not put it on a sheet. I'll hit okay. And what I do, I immediately get this plan detail view and that's one of the views I made. So that's, this is the plan detail view and you can see the, here's the new section, here's the new section. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I can see assemblies. I'm gonna expand this now. And once I do that, you can see that I now have all of these different views that I just made that are a part of this assembly. So looking at the 3D view of just this assembly, that's perfect. Same with the door schedule. There's probably just a couple doors, just like that. Elevation, yeah, it's pretty basic, but really this is a fantastic starting point for getting you off the ground for some very specific set of documentation in a building. It's very quick and very easy. So at this point, maybe I do go to new sheet. I'll go to view, sheet, and let's just select this sheet by default. Yeah, it's just the Autodesk default sheet. And I can just place these on the sheet, just like anything else. It's pretty great, pretty simple, pretty easy. They're all gonna show up just like this. They're, it's very quick. Of course, this view is already placed on the sheet. You can see it right there. I need to place this other section, just like that. It, it's very quick. So this is why you would definitely wanna use assemblies if it's for something specific. Now, honestly, I don't use assemblies all that much. I use it mainly for specific elements that I need to document pretty quickly. Maybe if you need to do a quick study for documentation purposes or a quick study of, like I said before, the interior of an elevator cab, if you, you could model it up really quickly, put that elevator cab inside an assembly and have Revit create all the views for you very quickly. And you can always go back and reassign these views to, if you want to change the, the view template, they're like normal views at this point. So that's the great part too. Now something that you should be aware of is that the default is that all of these views show up as detail views. Now what is a detail view as opposed to, you know, in this case, this is a section. It's a detail view of a section instead of an actual section view. Well, that means it's taking the view properties of the, the plan or view it was cut from, it's taken from, acquired from, and using that as its properties. So in the beginning, I chose that half inch scale and because, well, actually because this view template is at a quarter inch, that's why I'm seeing the quarter inch, but the th because it's a detail view, I really have less ability to see it in the project. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll change this detail view to an actual section view because it's really a section. You want it to show up as a section. And so I'll just change that to wall section. And now that's going to become a true wall section and not just a detail view. And I have more that I can work with as far as scaling, whether I'm using a view template or not. And I would do the same thing with the other sections and the floor plans. I would change those to real floor plans as opposed to detail views because it becomes an independent view at that point that you can manipulate on its own. It's not dependent on a view that it was pulled from. So really wherever you can, I would change this from a detail view to an actual view like we did in the sections. You have the option of changing this from a section 
uh, detail to an actual section. And like I said before, that would give you the option of changing the scale and making its own depend dependent view. Otherwise, you're not able to do as much with it. it it's just uh, a finer version of what you're calling out. So if you have a, a overall floor plan and you use a detail call out instead of like an, an actual floor plan, then instead you're stuck with just a finer scale of the same element where it's not its own view. So anyways, I'll cover that in a different video, but that was the basics of assemblies. So the last thing I have not covered is the acquire views here. And this is a bit different. So one thing, I'll, one thing I can do is I can come over here to my assembly. I can right click it and I can create another instance. So it's kind of like copying it. I want to place the same thing somewhere else, but I probably have this somewhere else. It's kind of another advantage of using assemblies. So at this point, I've got the same, same instance or the same assembly in two different places, two different instances. So if I click on this one, remember this was the original one I used to create the assembly from. I see create views and I don't have the option to acquire views. Another thing I can do is once I place another instance, you can see I select this. I can't create views from this one because I didn't use this assembly to create the assembly. I didn't use these elements to create the assembly. I used these over here, but I can acquire views. And what this means is that I want all of these views over here to now be associated to this specific instance of that assembly instead of this one. And why would you want to do that? Well, I might want to do that because this now is going to, I'll click acquire views just so we can go through this. This place will acquire all those views. And maybe what I want to do is change something in this assembly. So let's edit this assembly. I'm going to change a couple of these doors to a different door type. I'll change it to just a, a smaller door so we can see that there's a difference. And I'll, I'll accept and you can see that at this point, the edits cause a new assembly type to be created. Now, and I, that's the case. If when I come down here, I can see I have wall 005 because this is now different than that assembly. So let's look at what it would have happened if I did not associate the views to this other instance of this assembly. So I'll click this one. I'll acquire the views. So this is the main one at this point. So I'm going to go over here to this one. I'll edit the assembly. I'll change these doors to smaller size doors and I'll accept. I'm going to get the same error. But at this point, now let's change the doors with this being the main assembly. I'll hit edit assembly. I will choose these two doors. I'm going to make them a smaller door and I'll click finish. I'm going to get the same error again, but you'll notice that this well, this assembly and this assembly look different now. I, these doors did not translate, and we can also see that I have a completely separate assembly over here with all this, all the different views now associated over here to the no longer walls assembly, but now this one here, wall 005. So you can tell where all the views are based on where you see create views and where you don't see acquire views. The final thing I will say is if I take this main assembly, the, again, the one I used to create both of these, if I take that and I disassemble, Revit will say, at, at this point, because you've associated all of these views with this assembly, we're going to have to delete those views. And maybe you want to do that. Maybe you're okay with that. But if not, I'm going to delete this one because it's separate, and I will make another instance of this one. So I can say that this assembly over here is not the main assembly because I see acquire views. So what I want to do at this point is if I disassociate or disassemble the, if I were wanting to disassemble the assembly over here, I could then push all of the views to this instance and disassemble this one just fine. So let's do that. I'm going to change the views to this view and then I will disassemble this one. And at this point, nothing will happen, except I have this full disassembled, and, but I have the assembly over here. That's probably something that you'll want to do if you're trying to uh, disassociate one and make it slightly different. If you have an, a new assembly or something changes with one or the other, you're gonna have to uh, throw the views somewhere if you don't want those to be deleted. 
So that was assemblies in a nutshell. I sure hope you learned something. If you did, smash and demolish that like button. It really helps. Also subscribe. I really appreciate all the good feedback, whether it's good or bad. I really enjoy all the feedback. I sure hope you have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching.